Hey guys, Tom Quell here. Hope everybody's doing very well indeed as ever out there. Today I'm checking out another plugin. Yes, another plugin from the guys at Neural DSP. These guys are unbelievably prolific. This is crazy. But this one's a little bit different. Uh, normally when you think about the Neural DSP plugins, with the exception of the Corey Wong plugin, I guess, you're thinking about kind of higher gain sounds, kind of metal lead guitar tones, with some very cool clean tones thrown in as well, but definitely not vintagey kind of tones. This is something very different. Uh, the latest plugin, just down here, is based on the Tone King Imperial Mark II. Now the Tone King is about a two and a half thousand pound amp in the UK. It's a one by 12 combo. Definitely on the vintage side of things with six V6 power tubes and two channels. You've got a lead channel and a rhythm channel. And the rhythm channel will take you from chimey cleans. Uh, the Mark II version was designed to be less glassy, less kind of aggressive in the high end than the original version. Uh, and the rhythm channel will take you from those kind of glassy cleans, uh, chimey cleans, I should say, sorry, all the way up to kind of higher gain vintage rhythm tones. And then you've got a lead channel, which is thick, kind of overdriven sounds, very touch responsive, very vintage in its nature, and it also makes a great paddle platform. Now, as usual, they've gone to insane detail in modeling this amplifier, as they have done with, you know, all of the amplifiers that they've modeled. Uh, you can see here, we've got the lead channel with its volume, tone control, and then a mid bite control, which is quite interesting, quite unique to this amplifier. Lead and rhythm switch, and then the rhythm channel, which has got volume, treble, bass, okay? And then we've got reverb on the amplifier, and then we've got this tremolo circuit. Now, it doesn't stop there, because if you click on the Imperial logo, you can change the color, I selected this turquoisey blue because it matches my beautiful guitar. And then if we go to the back of the amplifier, now this is something we've not really seen so much on many of the Neural DSP plugins, if any, just racking my brain here. Uh, we've got the back of the amplifier. Now the reason that we've got this is this amplifier has quite a unique attenuation circuit involved with it. Now attenuation on a plugin is quite an interesting concept because with a plugin, volume is no longer an issue because of the modeled nature of the plugin. However, this is quite a unique circuit in that the attenuation actually does change the tone and especially the high end because it's got this high frequency compensation switch on here, which allows you actually to use the attenuation to either dull the high end uh, a little bit, which is what happens when you attenuate generally, or bring that high frequency compensation back. Now on the original amplifier, they had this switch here, which was this rhythm channel uh, selection switch where you could bypass the attenuation on the rhythm channel in order that you could balance the volume of the lead and actually the rhythm channel at the same time. And you can still do that, which is quite interesting. So this just shows you the level of detail in terms of modeling this amplifier to the nth degree, basically, that Neural have gone to here. So almost like an obsessive nature, which is very cool. And visually, as usual, everything looks totally top notch, exactly like the original amp, if you want to go and check that out. Uh, and I think originally they were in this color. You can also click on the Tone King logo here to change the color to your liking. If we look at some of the other elements along the top here, standard Neural DSP plugin kind of territory in terms of the UI. On the left hand side, we've got a wah, which functions as an auto wah as well, which is how I'm going to use it because I don't have an expression pedal plugged into my audio interface. But you can do that, totally expression pedal, all MIDI, kind of mappable as usual. We've then got three pedals. Uh, we've got a compressor, overdrive one, which is a lower gain overdrive, and then overdrive two, which is a higher gain, kind of thicker sounding overdrive. These sound fantastic, guys. Super, super touch responsive. Then we've got the amplifier itself. And then of course, de rigueur, we've got the speaker simulation here. Tons of different mics available. You've also got a room mic for each of the channels, the left and the right. Then we've got our standard EQ on here, which again is kind of de rigueur for the Neural DSP plugins. Uh, as you'd expect, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different bands, all very useful indeed. And then finally, post effects section. A beautiful sounding chorus. I am a big fan of the rate on full and the depth low for this chorus. And we've got a dry and wet mix on there, which is wonderful. That is gorgeous. I have to apologize for the noise in my studio as well, guys. As you can see, I'm in a new studio and I need to get the electric sorted in here. So at the moment, I do have some noise. You can hear that on the higher gain sounds. I apologize profusely. I am using the rather excellent gate that's built into the plugin here to kind of mitigate some of that, but you are gonna hear some noise, so I apologize. There's then a beautiful sounding delay, which is very similar to the other delays that are in the, um, the similar kind of plugins from Neural DSP, which gives you dual delay, single delay. You've also got um, synchronization on there. Beautiful sounding. 
So I'm using the dual delay and that kind of Andy Timmons style. Very pretty indeed. And then a post reverb as well. Now the reason for the post reverb as opposed to them on the amp is that as usual with Neural DSP, you can crank the decay and also the wet signal here and get these insane, beautiful sounding reverbs that are a little bit more of an ambience as opposed to the kind of um, reverb that you'll find in the amp. I mean, as reverbs go, it doesn't get much better than that. That is phenomenal. So let's bring the decay down and we'll just go a little bit of pre-delay. And as you can hear at the moment, what I've got is basically beautiful, chimey, clean tones, really clean. I'm on position four on my TQM one here, um, this Japanese custom shop one. If I hit hard, Still very, very clean, okay? No attenuation on here, nothing at the moment. Or right, actually, let me just check that. Do we have any attenuation on? We do, let's turn that off, or let's bypass for the rhythm channel. Okay, so let's go back to the amplifier here. Now, if I go to my bridge position, check this out. Just that little bit of snarl, really nice. Wonderful. So let's check out the amplifier first before we plug the pedals into the front end. So if we increase the volume here, this is like our gain control. Back off a little bit of treble, back off some bass. Uh, now you'll notice I had the output cranked here because the clean channel, uh, when you're actually running it clean, the rhythm channel, you need to boost the output because it's not, it's only a 20 watt amplifier. So it's not like this masses of clean headroom, but that's again, the beauty of having a setup like this with a plug-in as opposed to the real amp. <laughs> So there's the volume raised. tone really easy to play even though there's not a lot of gain going on there it sounds absolutely fantastic now if we just increase this all the way just so you can see where this rhythm channel tops out again sorry for the noise guys <laughs> sound thick full of kind of life and again in terms of the dynamic response it's very very touch sensitive indeed and dependent on your uh, volume control so if I pick lightly again so sorry for the noise guys but just bear with me So really, really lovely to play, fantastic. If we switch over to the lead channel with the gain about halfway, tone control just under halfway, we'll play with a mid bite control in a second. Again, a wonderful tone, very different sound. It's not quite as kind of heavy in the bottom end as you would find with the rhythm channel, but a great tone. Fantastic, really, really great. So let's just take the reverb down on the amplifier itself here a second, and let's play with this mid bite. So if we pull this down all the way, now, 
we've rounded out that tone and there's less grit in the mid, uh, the kind of mid range if you like. Wonderful. Okay, let's bring the mid bite down, bring the volume up, and in this case, we'll pull the tone back for a very smooth sound. <laughs> Great, great, great sound. So much fun to play. If we bring the tone up, now again, we can get into the attenuation side of things here a little bit, so you can hear what the effect is. So if we pull the attenuation down, okay, and I'll show you that switch with the high frequency compensation on and off. Now, whether you make use of this or not is entirely up to you. You might want to use it if you're channel switching on a live scenario, if you're recording, and you are actually using some kind of MIDI controller to actually switch between the channels. Uh, but here's a kind of idea of how it sounds. So here's with the attenuation on. Now if we bring the switch in so the high frequency compensation is on. Then back off again, it's a pretty obvious kind of sound. So it's kind of useful. I actually like it with the attenuation in, but with the high frequency compensation switch down to the normal mode instead of the max mode. It kind of smooths things out in a nice pleasing way and adds a little bit of compression as well, which is great. So I'll bring that back out again as uh, just kind of normal operation. Go back to the front panel. Okay, so that gives you an idea of some of the tones that are available just from the amplifier. Let's switch back to the rhythm channel. We'll get kind of a reasonable clean tone going, cleanish tone, bring the output down and I'll show you the tremolo circuit. So here is the cleanish sound on its own. <laughs> Bring in the tremolo, you can see where the speed's set, bring the depth up. This is really nice. Oops. Lovely warm sounding trem, sorry again about the noise. That's a nice addition, just in terms of how fast it goes and how slow it goes. Here's the full speed. Almost into vibrato territory. Very, very nice indeed. And again, just to reiterate, this noise is not coming from the plugin, it's coming from my studio. The plugin is completely noise free, of course. So we'll bring that out. Okay, let's stick with the rhythm channel and I'll show you the pedals in the front end at this point. So obviously we've got a compressor and two drives. So a little bit more volume added. Okay, the compressor has a compression, volume and blend knob. So it is available in terms of a parallel style compression. And then we've got tight and slow in terms, sorry, not tight, fast and slow 
in terms of the uh, response of the attack of the compressor as well. And then there's these LED lights, which will show you how much compression you're getting. So one more time, here it is without compression. <laughs> little volume drop, let's compensate for that. Okay, so quite a lot of compression going on here. Go to the slow attack. Blend about halfway up. Bridge pickup. You can hear just how much sustain that's adding. Um, if we put the full compression on and bring the blend down, we get this now. Really increasing that sustain and that noise, of course, as well. Sorry about that, guys, again. Wonderful, really, really great. So we'll take that out, let's put overdrive one in. Here's the clean tone again for comparison. Clean, okay. Overdrive one, controls all halfway up. That is wonderful, love it. So again, you can hear much more vintage in nature than these kind of very smooth sounding high end, uh, sorry, high end, high gain plugins that we've had before. Uh, it's great, really, really, really good fun to play. Now the other overdrive pedal, let's bring this one in. Again, so much fun to play. Let's crank the drive on this one. Oh, 
doesn't get much better than that. In terms of kind of the fun factor of playing through that sound, it's just phenomenal, absolutely great. These on a lower setting, if we want to push the front end of the amp, we can do that as well. They work great, great, that's great. They work great as boost pedals as well. So that's overdrive two working as a boost pedal. So here's the clean tone again. And in this instance, if you drop the bass out as well, you'll get more like a treble booster kind of vibe. There we go guys, that is an overview of this very different, more vintage sounding offering from the guys at Neural DSP. If at this point you've chosen not to dive into the Neural DSP kind of menagerie of tone if you like, because their plugins have been genre wise and kind of tonally outside of your wheelhouse, this might be the thing that persuades you to kind of take the dive into the more digital plugin world, um, you know, side of things if you like. Uh, it's a really fantastic, very different sounding plugin from these guys. And, you know, it might be one of my favorites actually, because generally I tend to err on the kind of more vintage pedal platform side of things anyway. And this does such a fantastic job of that. So check it out. You will find a link down in the description below that will take you over to the Neural DSP website. We'll actually find a demo of the plugin that you can download for free and check it out for a certain number of days. I forget how many it is, but it'll allow you to kind of test this out for yourself and see if it works for you. So there we go, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons below. And of course, hit the bell notification icon. You know what to do with that these days. Every YouTuber tells you to hit that notification icon to make sure you're notified whenever you get a new video uploaded on that particular channel. All right, guys, my name's Tom Quayle. Thanks for watching. If you want to support me, you can check out the links below for all of my lesson content for legato, improvisation, music theory, all of those good things, improvisation, all of that stuff. Uh, so check those out below as well. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.